Hey, good morning to you. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Good afternoon. If you're watching this later in the day, and I, there will be a tropical update this afternoon to make sure we stay on top of things. We have a few things to talk about, not only what's going on in the Gulf, but as well as what's coming off the coast of Africa. Now, I'm still showing that we are still going to be on that two-week, 10-day to two-week break from tropical season. And if you didn't watch that video from yesterday, I will put it up in the right-hand corner. Links in the description of that video, even the official message from NOAA saying that we have a two-week break. So you can see that in the video from yesterday. Links in all the description as well as this video as well. I always put the links to help save you time. So I really hope you have a very blessed day, a very happy Thursday. Friday is tomorrow. <laughs> Never been here before, hello. My name is Mark. I do upload every single day. Just not Friday from sundown to Saturday from sundown. That's Sabbath. But we'll make sure you're covered. Matter of fact, I'm showing that we're going to be in a little tropical break for the next 7 to 10 days. That don't mean we won't get tropical weather because everything can form late now. But I'm just showing that anywhere from the middle of the Caribbean all the way to the MDR. I explained in my video from yesterday, if you see all the links in the description of that video, how the MJO is putting us in sinking air for about the next 10 to 14 days. So nothing can come off the coast of Africa and ramp up. But something can form close. Western Caribbean, Gulf of Mexico, even the southeast of the U.S. We also showed major impacts coming from, this is actually Invest 92L that disappeared under Larry's uh, shear. And it made the wave all the way through. And this is it, just a big group of disorganized thunderstorms. However, it is showing some things, especially on the Euro, that there is some formation that will be coming out of it. But if you remember the cold fronts I showed you about, we have the one that we just got, the one that we are getting now. We still have two more to come, guys. We still have the one around the 16th and the one around the 20th. And the one around the 16th is going to help protect us from this here. So hit that subscribe button because I am all year long, guys. Hit that like button if you're enjoying these tropical updates. And God bless all of you that's going through Tropical Storm, Tropical Depression, Mindy. It was like all the information yesterday was correct and it did form up. Now, Euro showed 20 miles per hour winds. Nam showed 60-something miles per hour winds. But if you put them together, you get what we had. We had about 40 miles per hour winds, maybe 45. And a lot of people mostly got anywhere from 3 to 4 inches of rainfall so far from Mindy. So it did drop heavier amounts. You see as it's leaving towards South Carolina, it's starting to pick up some convection. This is your low level winds and it's starting to pick up a little convection. There will be some storms uh, brewing up out of that and there will be some precipitation. Now officially from NOAA and National Weather Service, changes to watches and warnings. All watches and all warnings have been canceled as far as tropical depression storm Mindy going through. Storm intensity is 35 miles per hour and movement is northeast at 20 miles per hour, so it's going fast. Mindy is departing the area. All tropical storm warnings have been canceled. Remaining light rain across southwest Georgia will exit the area this morning. Potential impacts. Little to no additional impacts are anticipated at this time across eastern Florida Panhandle, Florida Big Bend, southeastern Alabama, and southwestern Georgia. Little to no impacts on the wind. Little to no additional impacts on the tornadoes. So everything is going to be fine with Mindy. It's ramping down. It is getting some convection on storms, but it's on the way out, and the effects are pretty much done. Some people did get rainfall. I did see Savannah, Georgia did get about two, three inches. So a lot of people got rainfall from, from Mindy, but Mindy's gone. Now, power outage update. California is up to 21,000. Michigan is going all the way down to 13,000. So, yay, they really fixed their power problem. Louisiana, you still at right below a quarter million homes still without power, and it's still the southeast that's still 95% without power. Lafouche, Terrebonne, St. Charles, and St. John the Baptist. Y'all still 95% to 100% without power. But they are working towards y'all. Everybody else is starting to really get their power back. Even St. Tammany, y'all doing really good. And our 8 o'clock update. I wanted to wait for the update. You know how I do. It's at 30% for Disturbance 1, and it's at 50% for for the next five days for disturbance too, so that's still the same. Mindy is moving northeast at 20 miles per hour with 35 miles per hour winds, and Larry is moving with 100 miles per hour winds to the north northwest at 16 miles per hour. The 15th to the 21st that we will have at least a tropical depression or greater strength in the northwest of the Gulf of Mexico and the one that's coming off to MDR. If you look at our Arctic Oscillation, our AO is very important. Let's us know when we get these cold dips coming in. We do have one coming in from the 9th, to the 11th or 12th according to the euro and this is very important this is one that's affecting what we have in the gulf right now and maybe something around the 16th according to the euro 
DFS confirms the one we have from the 9th all the way to the 11th, and it might even last all the way to the 12th. But it is showing that we're getting one around the 15th and 16th, and another one still by the 19th or 20th. And we're going to need these to keep pushing these waves away. Now, I'm going to keep my eye on this park, because not only in the past has it shown a 958 for Texas from that wave, and it did show us a 975 right in southeast Texas, right in southwest Louisiana before as well. And it showed us a 972 going to Mexico. So really all these factors are still on the table. Now the updated run shows that it does take all the way to the 15th and 16th to get all the way over to the southeast of the US and it brings it forming up somewhere by the Carolinas. But once again, we do have another cold front coming that should suppress that back. It's gonna be all about timing once again. So far just riding up the coast. Now, if you check all 30 ensembles, there's only one. There's only one ensemble, so that means there's literally 3 to 5% chance of this happening. But if you look at E9, it is still showing that it could form up around the 13th, roll around Texas, and strengthen up and go towards Louisiana and Mississippi. Check around the 16th and 17th for that next wave coming off the coast of Africa. You can see that most of them show that it does come in very weak and it don't have any strength when it gets here. And that's because of all the sinking air that's coming into our area. But I'm still showing like here on E1 that it could get into our Western Caribbean and it does take that far for any formation because of the sinking air. And it could get into our Gulf within 10 days and so far go towards Northern Gulf of Mexico. We also showed down here on E26 that it still can come to the Southeast of Florida. Now, according to GFS, it does form up over here by the northwest of the Gulf of Mexico within five days, just like NOAA predicted, maybe a tropical depression or a greater in this area. And you can see it starts to roll up because of the cold front, and it does a little intensification right before it goes towards Louisiana and Mississippi. The Euro also confirms that in five days, something a little bit weaker will be off the southeast of Texas, right where Noah's talking about. And once again, it rolls and comes to get pushed out by the cold front and goes towards Louisiana. You check the Euro for chances of tropical depression. You can see in 72 hours, it rolls by the western side of the Gulf of Mexico and it could go either Mexico or southern Texas. At the same time, when we get around eight or nine days away, that other one starts reaching towards the southeast of the US and it could build up and still form right there off the coast. Now, as far as intensity goes, GFS shows that by the 12th, a little bit past three days, something weak could be in the Gulf of Mexico, and it could go towards Texas very weak, be hitting by the 13th. Or it could strengthen up to this one right here by the 13th, because it stays suppressed by the cold air, and it goes towards the northern Gulf of Mexico and intensifies a little bit before landfall. Now, if you look at the perturbed members from just a euro, you can show that by the 12th and 13th, most of the ensembles show that it will be in the western Gulf of Mexico. It will try to go in Texas, cold front pushes it back down, and it goes towards Louisiana. If you check just to see what the euro is showing, it's showing that the millibars would be somewhere around 1,002, 1,003 for the lowest. And then as it goes towards Texas and gets pushed back with the cold front and goes back towards Louisiana, then it has a chance to strengthen down to a 995, 998, and just swirl around and weaken and die. You can see this movement on a euro. You see as it gets into the Gulf of Mexico, it goes towards Texas. It actually forms up to a tropical depression at least right there. That's by the 14th. And then it goes into Texas with all this moisture. And then it comes back out by the cold front and goes over Louisiana with all that moisture. So it is going to be a big rain event. And if you look, according to the euro, in 10 days, that wave does make it over. Like I said, it stays weak, but it will start strengthening once it gets past all that sinking air. If you look also on the GFS, the moisture gets in the Gulf of Mexico, but it shows that it makes it up a little bit. It gets a little bit later. It comes around the 12th. Now, the CMC not only shows that the moisture will go into southern Texas or northern Mexico, it also shows that we have another wave come through the Caribbean very weak because of the sinking air. But when it gets into the Gulf, it has a chance to intensify and do something. At the same time, it's picking up the wave over here that's coming off the coast of Africa. And that's literally in 10 days on all the models. But when you look according to the Euro on the 18th, so we can see what's going on around 10 days out. And you can see looking for a tropical storm, not even a tropical depression. It's looking for something stronger. And it has a chance to be a tropical storm 
and strengthen as it gets towards the Caribbean. But you can see that northward push. It has to take that northwards push because the high pressure is swinging it around. Now, if you watch all this moisture come in, according to the GFS, you can see it heads towards Mexico and it heads towards Texas for the heaviest amount. Then you'll see it switches over towards Louisiana because it gets pushed by the high pressure. So you get very heavy rainfall and that's up to six to eight inches over there for Texas. Then it goes and puts another five to six inches for Louisiana as well. Here it is to the, according to the Euro. It shows it gets into the Gulf of Mexico and it goes to the western half of the Gulf of Mexico. And it confirms that it does shift over towards Louisiana as well. So this is definitely going to be hitting Texas with a lot of rainfall and it's going to be hitting Louisiana with a lot of rainfall. And some places show six inches, some places show nine inches. We just got to stay updated on this. I will do a tropical update this afternoon to make sure that this information stays steady and accurate. But that's a lot of rainfall. Especially for Louisiana. It looks heavier. That's 21 inches right there in that purple. Now, if you look at the model guys, this is a GFS wave according to NOAA. And when you see the cold air come down, you'll see the waves start to come through the Gulf and you'll see the cold air smash the waves and it actually separates it into two pieces. Part goes to the western uh, Gulf of Mexico and part goes towards Florida. Hopefully just bringing some storms but so far the cold front goes way into the Gulf and it smashes it up into two pieces and then it goes towards Texas. If you look right here on total precipital water you can see the cold front come down smashing this group of disorganized thunderstorms and making it into two energies. One goes towards Florida and goes across Florida. The other one goes towards Texas. So if you watch it according to GFS and Euro, you can see that the cold air comes down, which of course cold air is a big high pressure coming from the north, and it makes this big ring of high pressure way out here. So this swings all the moisture towards southwest Louisiana or towards Texas and this stays that way it actually grows and covers Louisiana now you got this big strong high pressure right here and this will definitely bring all this precipitation somewhere towards western Louisiana mostly towards Texas because you can see all the high pressure stretch way out so on the 13th when that next cold front comes down it's at the end of the cold front it comes down then it lingers to the southeast you can see that we have the high pressure pushing all that moisture to the west. So there's no way it could come to the southeast. It will be going towards Texas, maybe western Louisiana. The Euro confirms this also, but it shows that by the 14th, you see this big high pressure expanding all the way out towards Texas. Okay, just like the GFS is showing. Except the Euro is showing that it does form up at the last second so far for southern Texas to something very weak, and then it weakens down very greatly, very quickly. Now, according to the Euro, the rainfall the next three days, it goes towards the center of the Gulf of Mexico. Next five days, it goes towards Texas. Next 10 days, you get the full impact. And you can see how nothing is in this area because we have that sinking air. Please go watch that video from yesterday so you can understand what's going to happen for the next 10 to 14 days. But so far, according to Euro, New Orleans, two inches. Houston, over six inches. But Louisiana has it for the heaviest rainfall so far over 12 inches and we're talking by lake charles lafayette eight inches lake charles 13 inches cameron a possibility for 17 inches beaumont seven inches heavy rainfall for the northwestern gulf of mexico gfs confirms it in three days in the center of the gulf of mexico in five days towards the northwest of the gulf of mexico and in 10 days heavier amounts but it does show most of it does stay in the gulf at the same time, you can see that wave don't form any strength right here. Now, GFS does show lighter amounts, not as heavy as the Euro. It shows that Victoria, 6 inches, Lake Jackson, 6 inches, Houston, only 4, Beaumont, 5 inches. And as far as Lake Charles and everything goes, it's going to be 7 inches for Cameron, 4 inches for Lake Charles. They don't see that 11 or 12 inches. And just to recap, when you look at the MJO, and this is us right here, you have the MDR and the Caribbean on one eastern United States and western United States. So normally when we, when we get a lot of tropical activity, we get updraft right here, rising air. And for where we're at now, it's going to be going right here into three and four and not by us. And this is according to the GFS as well as going to three and four, not in one, eight, or not even seven. 
and also according to the euro and euro also confirms is going towards three and four and not us our tropics is one and eight this is mdr east coast of us and the caribbean it's not coming towards us so there won't be no rising air it'll be sinking air for us all the models show that if you watched yesterday's video i exp explained to you a little bit about the mjo now i'm gonna put this video link in the description i'm about to show you exactly what's going on on the nam 3k for the next 60 hours so you can see kind of what's going to be going on in the atmosphere this is from mike 444 i love the guy he's a great guy if you don't ever watch him please go subscribe to him leave a comment on his video today i'll put the link in the description he found some scientists actually confirmed that there is a message in our dna to us from our father guy so please go watch it there is a message for you there from god and that's the update guys i hope that you enjoyed the update if you did enjoy it please do me a favor hit that like button share this on social media anybody that might be impacted by these storms let them know what's going on if anything it's definitely gonna be a lot of rainfall coming for a lot of people now before you start on your thursday god bless every single one of you hope you have a very blessed thursday where are you going to school going to work i hope you have a very great day stay positive because positive thinking does bring positive results and that's been like that my whole life and it's always been a proven fact so i wish the best for you now, today i want to read to y'all a little word of our father please go see that video on mike's channel uh, the link is in the description so you can go watch it leave my comment let him know thank you he's a great guy god bless you mike thank you man it's, it's always good to hear from god psalm 148 praise ye the lord praise ye the lord from the heavens praise him in the heights praise ye him all his angels Praise ye him, all his hosts. Praise ye him, sun and moon. Praise him, all ye stars of light. Praise him, ye heavens of heavens, and ye waters that be above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. He hath also established them forever and ever. He hath made a decree which shall not pass. Praise the Lord from the earth, ye dragons, and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and vapor, stormy wind fulfilling his word, mountains and all hills, fruitful trees and all cedars, beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying fowl, kings of the earth and all people, princes and all judges of the earth, both young men and maidens, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord. For his name alone is excellent. His glory is above the earth and heaven. He also exalteth the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, even of the children of Israel, a people near unto him. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. <laughs> God bless you all. Please go watch that message from Mike. It will make you smile just to hear a word from your father. I pray for all of you to have a great day and a blessed day. I'll see you this afternoon for the tropical update. It will be a quick in and out. Just a little update. <laughs> all glory does go to Yahweh, God of Jacob, your father, <laughs> my father. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah, guys. Praise the Lord.